Guys, we're here now at SHOT Show day number two, and we are excited about it. We're gonna hit up all the brands that you wanna see. In fact, go ahead, drop a like, because we've been working overnight to get you these videos, but also drop a comment, let us know what you wanna see out on the floor, because we still have a couple of days left out here at SHOT Show. We don't wanna miss it, we don't wanna miss what you wanna see, so go ahead, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff if you haven't already done it. Thank you guys, and let's get to it. All right, now we're over here with Beretta. We've got Joe. Joe, thanks for taking the time, man. Yes, and uh, we introduced, or, or I know you guys introduced the 92X yes. last year, and we saw that at the NRA show, fell in love with it. You guys got now a full line of the 92X. Yes, Pretty awesome. So uh, which one do you want to talk about? Well, we ended up expanding the line. So last year you saw the full-size pistol that everybody liked. We now did a compact version. And we also did our Centurion version. And then what everyone's been so wild about is the 92X Performance. This is our performance gun, full steel. You got a steel upper, this is actually a steel frame, which Beretta <clears throat> was not known for, but now it's really made a huge impact on the market, is frame safety, <laughs> right? So this has really been a, a great addition to what we're trying to do and expand the line and keep like the heritage going of what Beretta did with the 92 series and the 90 series in general. All of the top, or all of the uh, 92Xs, that is kind of like our evolution of the gun, right? We've interchangeable sights, they're Vertec frames, Vertec grips, and then this is, this is the top of the line. I mean, this is where it's all gonna start We've got J.J. Ricaza, everybody knows him, he's amazing, and he's gonna be running the gun this year in all of his matches, so we're really excited about it. That's awesome, man, I'm gonna show that to the camera, because yes, that is a beautiful piece right there. Take a look at that, guy. He's got a good heft to it, that's for sure. It's all steel, and we also are gonna do an open class, which will be a little bit more advancement, gas pedals, you know, like super race gun. <laughs> right, liking that. Man, take a look, guys. Just talk about a beautiful pistol. Gotta love the rail on the bottom so you can throw all your tactical accessories. Yes, sir. <laughs> but yeah. very nice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. right? So take a look at that, guys. 92X Performance. Beautiful pistol that Beretta's got this time. And, and the frame safety, that is pretty unique. We're used to seeing that slide safety up top. We've always yeah. had slide safety, but when, you, when you're stepping into a different lane, as in our shooting sports and how popular they're growing. I mean, they're massive and they've everything from three gun to all your uh, Ipsic type stuff and just local ranges like it's grown so much that we got to evolve with it. And this will be a great addition. People are excited about it. And I mean, I wish we had a lot just stacks of them. <laughs> right. Well, I do too. I wish I'd see quite a few of them in the warehouse. But no, hey, Joe, thanks for taking the time yes, with sir. us. Beautiful pistol you guys got. And I'm excited to have some range time with it, maybe one day soon. Let me know down in the comments, guys, if maybe you'd like to see this as a future giveaway with Classic Firearms. We've got something over here that looks pretty sweet. What can you tell us about it? So what we have here is the 509 Compact MRD. So what you see really is we have the 509 family. So we have the 17 round gun. Then we have the tactical with the threaded barrel night sight. But a lot of people want something a little smaller and still mount all the optics and, and red dots and lights. So what you see is the 12-round gun, uh, but with the same optic system that you have on the tactical. So you can mount, like as you see here, the Trichcon SRO, the RMR, the Vortex Venom, Aimpoint Acro, Leupold, like the list goes on and on and on. Right. But what's nice about this gun is you can get all those optics but then you can also mount kind of all the all your duty lights as well. So it's the smallest kind of package you can get and still get all the lights and optics for for the platform. That's pretty awesome, man. And it's still great that F, that 509 technology, everything else just shrunken, but still have all the features. Yeah, exactly. So you still get the co-witness sights. And what's nice, so this is what you see, the 12-round grip. Still gets me kind of a full firing grip, but then it also ships with that 15 round mag as well for like when you go to the range or whatever. So you kind of get both sizes with one. And if you want to learn more about this, we got it in black and FTE and some of our other options. Check out fnamerica.com. That is perfect. I also too just want to take a look really quick. Sure. I like even with the 12 round mag, you're not getting that pinky underhang or overhang. Exactly. 
very comfortable, ergonomic gun, guys. Check out FN, and uh, I think the 509 Compact is pretty sweet. And still over here at FN for obvious reasons because they've got some pretty sweet stuff out right now. We're looking at two SCAR 20Ss, but these aren't like the ones we're used to seeing, right, Ben? Right. Uh, new for 2020 this year, FN is launching the 20S and 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, we also are going to roll out the 20S in the black color. So just like the 16S and the 17S available in the two colors, the signature flat dark earth and black, the 20S will be available in that as well. But obviously the focus this year is going to be on the 6.5 Creedmoor. The 20S will be available in the 6.5 Creed more in a 20 inch uh, heavy chrome line hammer forged barrel. Um, that's really the only difference in the rifle from the 20S we launched last year in 7.62 is just the barrel change. Um, it's a heavier barrel on the front of the on the gas block. It's a straight taper all the way out to the Surefire Pro Comp that's at the end of the barrel. Very nice. Definitely a fan of the Surefire Pro Comp. I know that definitely reduces any type of recoil, and already this thing manages recoil very well. Still seeing all the great features of the 20S with the adjustable gas block, the extended rail from the 17. Overall, just a very super good rifle. Super good rifle, listen to me. <laughs> but yeah, definitely a fan. And liking the all-black color, too. That's, that's, a, that's a clean look. It is. We think a lot of our customers will appreciate that. Um, so particularly law enforcement agencies will probably focus and gravitate more toward that color, particularly in the precision rifle. But again, to match all the other scars in our line, we offer the two colors now. But yeah, the, the 6.5 is an exciting cartridge for us this year. It's the same machine gun grade uh, material, but at match grade precision in a one and eight, I'm sorry, one and eight twist. Um, and it's a chrome line barrel should give our customers a longer barrel life in a 6.5 caliber. That is awesome. Ben, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Beautiful rifles at FN, guys. There was one more gun that we saw on the wall over here that looked like it, it well, it just caught my eye. So Ben was kind enough to say, hey, I'll talk about it a little bit more. So Ben, what exactly is this guy? This is the SCAR SC, the subcompact. In the SCAR family, this is going the opposite end of the family as a SCAR 20S where we've lengthened the extrusion, lengthened the receiver. On a SCAR SC, we actually shortened it. So the SCAR SC is a select fire car or select fire PDW and 556. So it takes or accepts the same SCAR 16 um, trigger module, but it's on a smaller bolt carry assembly on a small receiver, has a seven and a half inch 556 barrel, has the collapsible PDW stock, so it makes the overall PDW or the submachine gun very, very compact. And it just collapses down to a very, very compact system. Again, it's all SCAR in the receiver, trigger module assembly. Because it's so small, it has a non-reciprocating charging handle assembly on it. Because the reciprocating charging handle, there's almost nowhere to grab it and still operate it. So on the SCAR SC, it has the non-reciprocating charging handle assembly on it. Hey, very cool. Beautiful looking product, guys. Very nice, the SCAR SC. So don't miss out. Check this one out from FN. We're now hanging out over here at Kalashnikov USA. We've got Matthew and he's holding something that looks pretty sexy here. Tell me about it, man. Yeah, what we have here is a KR-103. Uh, this is basically the Russia's replacement to the AKM series of rifles. Nice. This is re often re referred to as a 100 series. Yeah. Um, what we got here is as authentic as you could possibly get to a true Russian 100 series rifle. Nice. Uh, this is chambered in 7.62 by 39. Um, everything from the muzzle to the butt pad is 100% American made. Everything from the springs, the detents, screws, everything you think of, even the magazine is 100% American made here. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we got everything down to even our cam rivet, every, everything you think of, the, the thin stem, everything is 100 series. This is the best you can get to an authentic 100. That's pretty awesome. I'm also liking too that it already comes with the optic mount on the reverse side there. Yeah. So that's definitely sweet and just a real clean, good looking yeah. setup. So very impressed. Uh, Nicely like done. That, we will be uh, doing a side folding feature that will be coming out. Uh, for right now, it is a fix, but the side folders are coming. If you look at our Kara 9s, they have the 5.5 rear block on it, so it's only natural. It's going to get the side folder on it. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely a fan of the KR KP9s yeah. as well. We hit up those at the NRA show and had a good conversation about that. I think I was telling you, it's kind of like Russia's you know, answer to the MP5, yes. and I think that is just so sweet. Yes, it is. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> very good looking AK100 series. Matt, thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. Appreciate man. it, guys. Check out Kalashnikov USA, guys. 
Now we're over here hanging out at Colt, and I know you guys wanted to see the pythons. So I've got Justin over here. Thanks for taking the time with yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely, man. And well, we're here in front of the pythons. I was able to get out to range day and put a couple of rounds down range with these guns. Yeah. And I got to tell you, it, it you already know, it's a phenomenal shooter. It is. It and is. that double action trigger pull, guys, I, I can't explain it other than just you got to get one and shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so the python's back. It's still making history. It is. Just tell me about it. Um, so, you know, the, obviously with the kind of the reputation and the history of the Python, kind of getting it out here and making sure we kept those critical things like the trigger pull, like that sort of oh my god moment when you kind of pull that double action trigger for the first time. You know, we knew that that was really critical to, to the success of it. And I, um, I think we nailed it. We had a really busy media day on Monday. Um, I, obviously, tons of people came through there shooting, and uh, and we got kind of got to see that moment all day long. So it was really cool. Um, I think, uh, like I said. Um, all the feedback we got on Monday was really positive. All the feedback we've gotten at the show. Um, it's a really busy show for us, obviously, this year. We're, well, uh, kind of our booth has moved, and we're kind of in a little different location, so it's hard to, to tell if it's apples to apples. But uh, the booth's kind of been packed for the first full day, and then we're heading into the second, and it's kind of packed again. So um, it's been well received. We're really excited about it. Um, as you know, we shipped a bunch of them in December already, so it's actually already kind of uh, out there in the market prior to the press releases and everything going out January 1st so we really kind of did uh, a good job with one my favorite thing here though has been asking people so like tell me your Python story meaning like everybody's got a Python story whether they um, maybe passed on one in a shop or like you're a younger guy a little younger than me even so you you never really even had a chance to, to buy one new on the shelf right because anybody under the age of 40 basically never saw one new on the shelf um, so that's what I want to ask you. Tell me your Python story. <laughs> Man, I hate to say it, but I actually don't have a Python story. I don't have a good one simply because every time I've seen them, they've been at a gun shop yep. for thousands of dollars, and I'd walk by and say, that's a cool gun. Yep. And uh, But I don't know if I'll ever own one. Yeah, Always a dream of mine. Yeah. There's items by the time you sort of exactly. stumbled on them, yeah. right? So. So, um, so that's cool because what I what I like to tell people is like that's really who we made the new Python for. You know, I, we appreciate the collector community out there. We appreciate the people out there who are really deep into the old Pythons. Like that, that's great. Um, but really, it's about giving everybody who's really coming up shooting now a chance to to go back and and uh, and get that chance over again. So, to you know, the guys who maybe they come over here and they tell a story about a Python they passed on the shelf. Like, oh, I was 25 and it was a lot of Money and I, you know, couldn't quite afford it, and then like that was it. I never saw another one on the shelf again. You know, we get a lot of those stories. Right. You know, that's who it's for. It's for the people who uh, who don't have a python. You know, the people who do have a python who who maybe went out and bought a collector's one a couple of years ago. That's cool. Now put that one away, buy a new one, shoot the daylights out of it, and uh, and enjoy it and have fun because really that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I guess you can say my Python story started yesterday or two days ago now yeah. at Range Day when I was able to pull the trigger on one of these guys. Absolutely and loved it. And what can you tell me as far as like the mechanics, the upgrades, I guess I'll call them, since the original Python? Yeah, so a couple areas. So number one, the frame itself is, is much stronger than the original Python. Okay. Um, there's two major contributors to that. One was a redesigned target target site. And we we, we kind of took a couple things we learned with the King Cobra target, including um, how this site is designed. The original Python site, um, you know, it was it was an adjustable target site similar to this, but the the uh, amount of material in the top strap of the frame that had to be cut out in order to fit that old site actually weakened the top of the frame a bit. So we were able to kind of redesign that, redesign a, a site that wouldn't remove so much material. So, we, so there's a bunch more added material up on the top strap of the frame and then combined with um, what we're calling kind of more modern stainless steel alloys. So there's 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 stainless steel grades, uh, grades of stainless steel that didn't exist back in, you know, uh, back when we introduced the stainless models in the, I think it was the late 80s uh, uh, at, uh, at Colt. The old ones were like a 400 series stainless um, and uh, they're just stronger stainless now. So um, that's, you know, the big contributor to the strength of the gun is that. And then combined with that is we went through the action of the gun and we combined, um, a lot of people have heard me talk about 
you know, we removed, uh, it was a total of 12 parts actually from the whole gun and, um, and eight parts from the action. It's not that we like went through and we're like, we don't need that anymore and kind of threw it away. It's that if you look at things like the ratchet uh, on the gun, that, you, that actually used to be two pieces and now it's just one piece. So um, the hand of the gun used to be a, a multiple piece assembly. Now it's just all machined out of one piece. And that's just a testament to modern equipment, modern machinery. Um, you know, uh, you have much different ways of machining things than we did in 1955 when the Python was first designed and released. Right. Very cool. So guys, like Justin was saying, let us know your Python story down in the comments below. I want to hear them and I'll try my best to get to every comment as well. But guys, we are truly looking at history rebuilt here. So check out the Colt Python, both again in the four inch and a six inch, correct? Yes. Yeah. So beautiful pistols, beautiful revolvers, guys. Check them out. Don't miss them. The Colt Python. Justin, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, we're back over here at our booth, Classic Firearms, of course. We've got the guys from Pioneer Arms here today, and you might recognize them, or at least their products. We've got the Help Up here, Help Up Elite. We've also got their Sporter line of rifles, which are such good quality rifles and firearms in general with their uh, Help Up being pistols. And I got to tell you, out of all of the Pioneer AK pistols and rifles we sell, which is in the thousands, they have some of the least customer complaints and call-ins for customer service that we've got. So great job on the products, guys. Real high quality stuff and great movers for us too. Definitely a big fan. Again, thanks for being here. And uh, Michael, CJ, what can you tell me a little bit as far as like, I guess you could say a little bit of the history behind Pioneer. Where did you guys come from? Okay, Pioneer Arms it's, uh, was established in Poland. The company was established in 2004. Uh, we are located in Radom, uh, Poland, the, and actually we are located in the buildings of where the former um, Ar National Army uh, producers were located. Uh, we have two buildings over there. Uh, we, um, we run complete production of all of the parts in-house. Uh, so we have the stamping plant, we have the casting plant, we have the CNC machining and of course assembly. All of the guns you see here on the US market, uh, which are the commercial line, are built the same as our military uh, rifles, which we supply all over the world. That's very cool, and we definitely see that as well. CJ, do you want to hit on that? I've been a little bit of humble there. What, what the party's leaving out is, is when Circle 11, that everybody knows, went bankrupt, uh, Pioneer Arms went in and purchased, you know, we purchased the license. So we're actually one of the companies that actually own a Klitschnikov license to actually build these guns. So we're not, make, we're yeah. not making one out of where we've tore it down or anything. We have the actual Klitschnikov license and the rights to be able to build it. Not only that, we purchased some of the Circle 11 buildings that weren't, that weren't being tore down because they were uh, uh, collapsing. So we're actually in the Circle 11 buildings. We have a lot of the Circle 11 machinery. We have the Archer that was part of Circle 11 to go with that. We have some of the craftsmen that actually worked at Circle 11. And you know the machinery, so we're, we're in their buildings. We're, we're using the, some of the same machines, some of the same craftsmen. We just don't have Circle 11 there. We do have the number 11, and we do have the Archer logo for it. Uh, but that's why the quality is with this gun, because it's the same craftsmen and stuff that we're doing out of Circle 11. Yeah. You know, so it, it's a great gun. It's everything is made in house. We have our own spring machine that makes our own springs for it. So absolutely, all of this gun, the polymer, the rails, uh, the castings, we do all of that inside of there. The CNC machines, the barrels, we do our own barrels there. So it's 100% in shop. So we don't have to worry about suppliers except for raw material. Right. And the other thing is, is, is the materials and stuff that we do are in our cast parts. We actually have a machine that tells us once we get the raw metal in, that we put it in the machine and it tells us exactly what the process is that we need to have to make that metal the certain hardness that we want it. And there's, there's bows. I, I would like for you to come to the plant. Maybe we'll get you to go there this summer. That would be very cool. I'd love that. Well, we'll get you to go over there and you can actually see we have bowls of nickel, we have bowls of carbon that we mix in with these. And then every time that we do a casting, we, we do our own molds. Uh, we have the universal mold that we do, or university. We control the process 100%. So we mix our own steel alloys. Uh, we control them and of course uh, every part which is critical for us, uh, it's 100% x-ray. Uh, after after the casting kit's finished. Not only Very that, cool. when the, we destroy, after every casting comes out, we destroy a part that comes out of there so we can test it to make sure that it's proper hardness. Wow. You know, and then it goes through the process of the, of the guns being milled and being fine, 
and then we run it run it through our work uh, workstation and stuff like that. And there's still, um, you know, you you think of this big modern place and everything else, but AKs aren't made in the big, you know, they still have the uh, the hand presses and stuff up there where these big guys, you know, are still doing putting these pins and stuff for the hand presses. And there's a lot of manual labor involved putting this in it to make sure that we have the same quality and everything else with it. And something you hit on that was reflected upon. You know, on my side of the house and stuff that, that we get as far as any warranty issues or anything else, they're very similar. And believe it or not, the biggest issue that we have with this gun is people call us in because they don't know how to remove the dust cover. Oh. We point them to YouTube and said, hey, this is a proper way to be able to do that. And other than that, I can't really think of any problem that we've had with this firearm at all. That is very impressive, guys. And you've heard it here right from the guys here, man quality products and hearing again I didn't actually know all that went into the manufacturing and the quality and everything else that you guys put into it very impressive stuff definitely a fan for sure well if you notice something else that we have we have the help up a leech which has a rail on it yeah. now we designed this rail built in with the gas block everybody wants to do the cover and there's a lot of different people out there doing it so we built that elite for it to do it it still has the dovetail sight on it right. so it's still an accurate rifle pistol to be able to shoot if you want to brace it uh, so it's still great for that phase and then we have the traditional so we still have the sight on it So you can get either one here and you can get them you can get them through classic uh, They're you know a great seller of this product for us And you know it's the rail is built in and it's a standard Picatinny rail So any red dot or anything else that you want to put on the firearm it's there It's not going to move because it's actually fixed to the gas block of the gun that's going to be there And that's one of the things that set it apart from all the other ones out there very cool. Definitely liking that. And we've got one of the sporters sitting over there too. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Guys, now we've got the sporter here that CJ is holding. What can you tell me just about this rifle? Well, one of the great things about the rifle is, like we were talking about earlier, is how it's made in the factory. It's made back to the same traditions and everything else that they originally wore off an actual Kalashnikov license. Can't say that enough. We own the license to make this. So this is as close as you're going to get to a Kalashnikov without having an actual Kalashnikov because most, most of them aren't made off the license. They're made off of guns that are taken down and internet files that have been passed around. I mean, it's smooth, tight, smooth, tight gun when it goes up inside there. The safety and everything else is right to the side. It's smooth going back and forth on it. And one of the best things that I like about the gun is is the stock system that we've got set up on it, the polymer one. It's got the little pad on the back of it. And rather than having a collapsible stock or something else that goes on it, which I think you guys do offer that you can put on them, is I like the solid stock because it gets, it gets more to where you want it to be at. And if you use the firearms like I do, where they go in the back of your truck or you're throwing them in your truck bed and everything else, you don't have to worry about all the gouges and stuff in them with that. Right. But it's a, it's a comfortable, smooth firing gun. It's got our logo on the side of it. And it's like I was saying earlier, it has the Archer logo right on the side of it. And for people that know anything about the history of Poland or anything else, that is, there's a statue of this in the city of Rodham. Oh, cool. So the Polish firearms and stuff on it, and we own the logo. Um, to the city of Archer, you know, the city of Archer to be able to be there. You got anything you would like to add, Michael? Basically, you said everything, you know, you covered everything. Uh, I just would like to say again that, you know, we control the production 100% having, you know, all of the parts produced in-house. Right. Uh, you know, with the quantity of the guns we make per month, uh, we cannot uh, rely on the suppliers. So everything what you see here was made in Radom and it was brought to the United States. It's the same configuration. That is very cool. One of the other things too is this one's also in an elite version that you can have, so you can also get this one with the rail on top of it. Right. So if you if you're one of the guys that's not a traditionalist and you want to put a red dot or or even a uh, one by four on top of it, you can still put that on top of it, and it'll it'll bolt right up to the Picatinny rail, and um, you know that works good with that. Awesome stuff, guys. And oh my goodness, guys, look at this. I think we've got. Is that, is that a ghost? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> guys, we've got Ben here. Ben, what do you want to say, man? Well, I came up. I saw you guys doing the video. Michael, first, thank you for being here. I know you traveled a long way. You came in from Poland via Los Angeles. <laughs> a little bit of a nightmare trip from what I understand, but he made it. It's a pleasure to be here. CJ, thank you for being here. I know you guys will probably already cover a lot in my absence, so I don't want to rehash things that have been said. But since we're doing this, I did want to tell people and express on camera how much we appreciate our partnership with Pioneer Arms. 
It has been hugely successful. We had no idea what to expect when we got into this. Both parties have displayed a lot of trust in one another and it has paid off. It's been, you may have already covered this, but it's been such a successful product line. Return rate is almost zero. Everybody loves these rifles. I don't know if I'm at liberty to say, but we got some big plans for 2020. Yes, we have. Uh, some more things coming up. And uh, onward and upward, this is, I, I'm more excited about this than anything we going to have going on in our product line because it's a win-win. It's worked great for everybody. Customers love it. We have such good support from the factory, such good support from Pioneer Arms USA. I had the opportunity to go to Poland. A lot of people at Classic were jealous because I got to fly over and visit with these guys. And Michael, you were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael is an incredible host. To see that factory, to see their capabilities, what they are able to do over there, to see the military production going out just the same as the civilian production. And those guys shoot hundreds of thousands of rounds through those rifles in life or death situation on in skirmishes all over the uh, every theater of battle you can think of, right? Right. And it's the, the same quality they're putting into the civilian you know, variation. You know what, man? We have we have uh, two of these guns. Uh, we just had them out at range day out here. Both of them fired 4,000 rounds, and the guns that we brought out here were ones that were converted because basically we were trying to do a, a torture test to see if we could destroy them. The two guns we had at the range out there that everybody fired, they each fired about 4,000 rounds out there, but they had fired 40,000 before that. And so that just slows the amount of pressure and stuff. So if you show me somebody that's going around 45, you know, thousand rounds through a firearm and expect it to still be functioning. So that's the guns that were there. We don't, we don't do pretty guns. Uh, you know, we do durable guns that'll last. And, and that was the guns we brought to the range. We didn't, we didn't build automatic guns just for range day. Right. We brought automatic guns out there and, and I'm sure that you saw them. They were, they were fairly war. Um, before we ever started sending rounds down as far as how that they were beat up and everything else. And the guns functioned, you know, just like they should have. You know, and they, want to reiterate, they were not designed as four auto guns. They were semi-automatic guns that we just converted over. And so there was still a lot of semi-automatic parts inside of that gun that we made that we're testing to see how long that they last. You know, it didn't have a full auto boat in it. It still had the semi-automatic boat on it. And to go back on exactly what we're doing over there and everything so else, to, sh to show your customers and everything else and your viewers exactly what we're going to do, we're going to take these two guys to Poland and we're going to take these them over there. Guys? These two guys. <laughs> we're going to take these two guys to Poland and we're going to. You got it on camera now, Clint. Yeah, yeah and we're going to put them there. That's fuel there. We're going to, we're going to put them through the factory. They're not going to do the grand tour that we did, they're going to work. So we'll, we'll put them through the factory and, and the whole phase to go through from the, from the injection molded, from the design phase to the injection molded and. We will let them build our their guns. We'll yeah. let them build their own gun. How about that? Scratch. From the scratch. They'll build their own gun on video and then and then bring it back and they'll have all of this stuff to, to put on on there and you can break it down in segments if you want or however you want to do it and then you'll have your own guns to come back that you could start shooting with it. That sounds awesome. That's not going to be a giveaway. And we, <laughs> and, and we didn't let Ben build his own gun when he was over there because he's more of the pretty boy face. Yeah, yeah that's true. So he's more of the pretty and the less of the hands-on. That, that's absolutely true. Yeah, you can't trust me around any kind of sharp object or tools. I'm just not uh, qualified to handle it. But, uh, oh man, what a great offer. That's good. But, no, it's not an offer. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Let me clarify one thing you said, though. I know that you build these for durability because we have people telling us how they went out and tortured these and can't make them fail. But you said we don't necessarily have pretty guns, and I know you were talking about the ones you took the range day. But if you see the quality and the beauty on these, and the rivet work, and the way everything fits properly, it's something that you're able to do there in Poland that we just don't see duplicated stateside. And again, I'm, I'm very, I'm gonna step out of this, but I'm very proud of the partnership we have with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the effort. CJ, I'm gonna turn it back to you. I'm gonna go out and try to buy some cool stuff. All right. <laughs> go get us some cool stuff. Go get them cool stuff, Ben. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. The only last thing to add on that is, is we have some really good stuff coming in the future. Um, so we've, we've acquired um, some original materials and stuff like that. We've got some uh, different calibers and some other stuff that's coming in here. And everything that we do, and I know Ben's talking about pretty guns and, and us talking about durable guns. Our guns are 
aesthetically pleasing because they're all guns that they're built out of the same quality to go through with it. And unlike most companies and stuff like that, when they bring the guns in and they ship them right in the box and go out, every one of these guns, when they arrive in from Poland, each one of them get a visual inspection and everything else and a function check before we ever send them out. So there's, there's a quality control that they have over there and then there's another quality control that we do here in the States just to ensure that the customer gets the product. And 90% of the people that call in and everything else about this, if there's if there's an issue with the gun that they have an issue with, they're directed, especially if it's if it's a help up, they're directed to contact me and I wind up talking to the customer personally because I want to know what the issues are going with these guns. Seven seven cases, most of them were dust covers. Um, had another one where the guy took it apart and had the boat out of it, put the gun back together with just the uh, which is the boat carrier without the boat head in it, and then had the boat locked to the rear and couldn't figure out how to get it out. Uh, a little bit of a talk with a screwdriver, but just some of the products that we do, a lot of great things coming in here, and it's great being partnered with you guys. Absolutely, that, uh, that feeling is mutual. Absolutely, guys, love you guys. Thank you very much for taking the time, coming over here, showing off and giving us that detailed insight as to what goes into producing y'all's Pioneer firearms. They're, they're phenomenal. Don't make any plans this summer because you're going to Poland. <laughs> hey, you guys heard it right here. Yeah, I think that would be, be pretty awesome there. So let me know, guys, down in the comments what you're looking forward to, what you're hoping to see from Pioneer later this year. And as again, again, guys, thank you. Now we're over here with Arsenal, and they just came out with their AK-20 line of firearms. And we've got Constantine here. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. And can you just kind of go into detail about the AK-20, what it is, how it works, how it's made? Uh, okay, uh, we are trying to uh, to develop like new platform and uh, like an increase uh, like AK maximum possible for current time. Sure. Uh, what uh, what can we provide? No, of course we have uh, like very rigid and permanently attached Picatinny rail, and you can use any red dots, rifle scope, night vision devices, any. Uh, it's very stable. We are made endurance test uh, during like. 10,000 rounds and from the beginning and to the end the point of impact absolutely same it's very stable uh, next moment it's the first gun in the industry I hope uh, which very stable working with subsonic ammunition because you know as a rule subsonic not so powerful and net not enough energy for cycling uh, we updated it and we have on our guns adjustable gas block uh, with this reposition for standard ammunition, for subsonic, and in the middle, it's extra one position. Uh, it depends from short or long barrel. Uh, for the short one, it's like maximum, maximum silenced. In this position, we are uh, locking the gas system completely, and the mechanism not cycling. We are making like one very quiet uh, shoot. If you need, after this, you can reload it quickly uh, like quiet and repeat it if you need if you don't need so quiet or you could repeatable you can turn to subsonic and shoot how many rounds you have uh, in long barrel it's a little different because it's more like assault rifle uh, like our main purpose in the middle position it's oriented to use with standard ammunition and suppressor uh, we have it in two uh, different variants, uh, with polymer handguard like this one, or with aluminum. Polymer is more lightweight and uh, still has the opportunity to attach Picatinny rail, short Picatinny on the left and right side, and M-lock on the bottom for any pistol grip or triangulate grip or any. Uh, aluminum handguard we are recommended if like for heavy duty. Uh, when you have a lot of laser device, flash hider, a lot of another pieces, grips, no, like it's it's like tank. It's extremely strong. <laughs> Good. It's, uh, this is the main difference. Ah, and by the way, we have it in three different uh, barrel lengths, uh, 10 inches. It's like shortest, like this, like AKSU. 10 inches, it's like middle, and 16 inches, like a rifle. Uh, additionally, we provided, we created. It's like a complex, or not only the gun. It has like a uh, unique uh, suppressor, very efficient. We are tested with another manufacturer, it's really very efficient. Uh, we are using uh, a lot of rooms around the barrel in this area, and by this reason, our suppressor uh, 
from from the muzzle is more shorter than if it will be attached only to the muzzle area. Right. Uh, additionally, right now we have, for example, this one you can see in 762 by 39, like universal and, and like 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 biggest market. Right. Uh, but if it's not enough energy for you, you are always can uh, order like 50 caliber like this or no like more correct please don't uh, mistake with a 50 bmg no it's like 12.7 by 42 yes uh in subsonic era it has a, like heaviest uh, bullets like 500 600 grains it's maximum possible maybe to, on this moment on the market wow yeah. uh, but you still can use and uh, supersonic ammunition yeah. uh, high velocity it's uh, it will work in with like, with our adjuster system yeah. this is what we can provide for market right now i think it's in ak area i hope it will be the best solution yeah yeah very cool thanks constantine for all of that information real beautiful rifles here and guys hear that chambered in a 50 cal can't, <laughs> that's awesome i love that and beautiful looking rifles again thanks for taking the time welcome absolutely guys check out arsenal guys now we're over here at ruger and all of you have been commenting sending in messages cover the ruger 57 well we've got matt here and his fabulous mustache to cover the 57 so thanks for taking the time man and uh sweet sweet gun guys when we approached it i said hey can we shoot a video on it and he actually just pulls it right out of his pocket you mean this here yes that is exactly it so just tell us about it man well so ruger 57 we launched it just about two weeks or so ago yeah. Uh, this is really the second pistol platform ever available for 5.7 by 28. Uh, it's a smoking little cartridge, little bottleneck, uh, throwing a 40 grain, 22 caliber bullet, 1600 plus feet per second out of a, a five inch pistol. Right. So it's fun. There's no recoil to speak of, and uh, 20 plus round, 20 plus one rounds of capacity. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's a metal body magazine, double stack, double feed. And uh, because it's you know a pretty thin body magazine, we also have a really nice ergonomic grip. Yeah, it feels great. It's a long cartridge, and and you know for some people, well, their guns are just too big to hold on to. Uh, it's, a, it's a great pistol grip, good texture, easy trigger reach, safety right where it belongs, kind of up in that 1911 position. Nice. Uh, and then you know the rest of the gun, it's a billet machine slide and barrel, of course, both steel. Nice green fiber optic front, black plain notch in the back, you know, adjustable sights. Uh, it's, a, it's a gun you need to hold, and if you can, get your hands on it and do some shooting. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. So, very cool, guys, and I'm impressed with the weight of this thing, too. Very lightweight, guys, and uh, notice it's got an ambi safety on there. Very good feel to it. And what can we guess here for an MSRP price range on it? MSRP is 799. Street price is going to be probably high 600s. All right, that is awesome. Well, I'm very excited to get a couple of these in the warehouse when they come in. Loving everything about it so far. You got the pick rail on the bottom, so you can put all your tactical accessories on it, of course. But uh, yeah, I think I'll play with it here for a little bit more, Matt. But Thanks for your time, man. Oh, pleasure. Glad you came by. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Check it out, guys. The Ruger 5.7. You've all been wanting it. You've all been commenting, hey, go check out Ruger in the 5.7. Well, here it is now for you guys. Now we're over here hanging out and having some fun with High Point, guys. We've got David here. Thanks for taking the time, man. Absolutely, man. And, guys, I mean, the first question I want to ask is, when's the AK coming out? What? <laughs> huh? so, so there's not going to be an AK? Huh? I guess not, guys. I tried. I'm sorry. You, you want an AK? Here's how we'll have fun with that. If you, so, want, if you want an AK, this is our solution for you. That i got to say, I'm pretty impressed. What is this? This is the, at its core, 1095 carbine, but this is the MK1095 Bowcaster. And if you want one of these, you need to hit up Student of the Gun. Okay. That's who produces this lovely piece right here. <laughs> it's definitely very interesting. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. But, man, we're also a big fan of your high point carbines, obviously. They're fun to shoot and all. We've got the Yeet Cannon, love it, of course. And what we've got here are a couple of those, am I correct? Yes. Yes, these are pre production samples of the actual YC9 of what's going to be coming out. That's awesome. So, last year at Shot Show, you know, we debuted a 3D printed prototype that was on our glass case. You, know, yes. you could look at it. All the features we had in that gun, this is what we're excited about. Every feature we had in that 3D printed model is now in this gun. 
everything with one big addition for us. We changed out the front sight from the old guns. It's molded into the Z-Mac. Right. This now will accept Glock style front sights. That's awesome. So like, yeah, so like right here, I've got excess sights installed on this model right here. That's great. Um, yeah. But yeah, everything is there. The threaded barrel, standard every model. Yeah. Glock site compatibility, obviously new slide design. These are these are finished. This is what the actual guns will be like. Yep. Elongated rear, uh, rear sight base. So you can swap out for Picatinny rail for optic mounting. Nice. Um, legit Picatinny rail now for accessories because the old C9 380 couldn't mount really anything. Right. 1445 is proprietary. So now, now you can mount your normal stuff up to it. We're still rocking the Ambi mag releases. Yep. Um, instead of our sear drop safety that rattled in the gun, we changed it out with a grip safety now. Nice. And the palm swell on the end is a reversible, rounded or flat, so you got a little customization there. Yeah. Retextured the grips. Um, these are still kind of a work in progress as well, but they're not slippery like the old guns were. <laughs> right. Um, big thing that's still in development is the magazine. The old guns had a eight round magazine standard. These things we're gonna shoot for a 10 plus one, maybe even more if possible. Sweet. Or maybe just an extended round you know, magazine in the end. Right. Um, all that still, lifetime warranty, yeah. still made in the US, yeah. you know, and around $200 what we're going yeah. for. Yeah, and you can't beat that, man. No, and, it, no. and they're great little guns, absolutely. And you've got one here that's just tacked to cooled out, yeah, right? This, this is my, this is my what I call the loaded modeler. I mean, some maybe go rolling special-ish, you know. Again, just, just showing how you can mount lights too. We've got TLR7 on here. Nice. This is our rail that we're designing that will drop in place of the iron sights. Cool. And we've got a burst fast fire thrown onto it. So, I mean, you want to go high speed, low drag, you know, you can do it now that's with this it. thing. That's <laughs> it right there. This is the, uh, this is the Yeet Cannon Tactical right here, guys. That is awesome, man. Well, hey, thanks again, David, for taking the time. <laughs> Loving the student of the gun bowcaster. It really caught my eye walking over here because I was just like, all right, I don't know. Chewbacca would be proud, I guess. You know, yeah, you I'm, bet, I'm man. <laughs> it's 10 millimeter. Come on, of course yeah, it would be. <laughs> absolutely. You got it, guys. Guys, check out the Yeet Cannons. You can't go wrong with them. Talk about the meme gun. And you guys have taken it, run with it, and made something really cool out of it. So good job, man. Good Thank job. you, man. Appreciate it. I don't know if y'all knew this or not. But this is my problem solver. <laughs> Guys, now we're over here hanging out with Salient and Archon. And we've got Garrett here with the Archon. And he's got some pretty sexy stuff laid out. And of course, we're familiar with the Type B that we like quite a bit. So uh, Garrett, man, what can you tell me about it? So first off, we're going to go over everything on the outside of the gun. And then we'll work into the internals. So starting off, we run a metal, metal trigger shoe on all of our Type Bs. Uh, very durable very awesome trigger uh, obviously you know from shooting it it's, yes, it's very nice it is. Um, then we move on to the uh, the grip texturing on the outside what's really cool about this is it's all designed to fit in your hand to counterbalance the natural recoil of the gun so if you look at it you'll see some rays going one direction and other directions it's yeah. really really sweet setup uh, so we'll move into the internals it breaks down very similar to a Glock push it in pull the pin out comes apart uh, basically we have a full steel insert full rails go all the way down so the gun rides on no polymer so even though it's a polymer frame it is actually like a hybrid style gun so you get full metal rails nice uh, we run a a three-piece guide rod so it's got two springs pre-captured the last one's uncaptured we got some plans for the reason why it's uncaptured but we just can't talk about that just yet <laughs> and then the meat and potatoes of everything is our speed lock system so this is how the gun actually performs the way it does and gives you that light shoot and feel so when you look here that is the action of the pistol itself it's about an eighth of an inch movement forward and back the rounds are fully supported by our ejector so everything going into the chamber has no issues clean insert clean exit um, and that pretty much covers the the outside of and inside of the gun I mean a very basic system but also tons of engineering that went in behind it I mean the gun is meant to have a, the lowest bore access on the market right now and I think we pretty much achieved that with with the look and feel of this gun yeah, I would agree with that statement. Having shot it, I gotta tell you, it's pretty sweet. Nice, uh, that was pretty smooth, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, definitely a sweet shooter, guys. And you can definitely tell that low bore axis too when shooting it. I mean, just about where my finger is is right, right, right about where the barrel is. Yeah, and so definitely a smooth shooter, guys. And one really a cool feature too is even though it's not ambi. Changing out the uh, mag, the mag release can, is just super cool. I can about, show you if you got a second. Yeah, why not? So you'd want to just put your magazine in backwards, hold it in place, drop it out, turn it around, put it back in, pull the magazine out. Now you've switched the magazine. Super easy. Yeah. So yeah, so even though, like I said, not technically an ambi, but switching out the mag release so that way you can just 
make it lefty or righty. Exactly. Super cool, really innovative, something you haven't seen before. Like that feature a lot, like how it shoots a lot. So guys, definitely check out the Archon Type B. You won't be disappointed at all. Well, and you know, and the price point too. So looking at this, it sits MSRP at 850. So you you know, you get all the customization that you would want from a, you know, out of the box Glock, but at not as much price. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a lot of customization, a lot of features yeah. packed into a great value. So don't miss out on that, guys. And check out, too, the salient line of firearms as well. Just good looking guns overall. Liking that and that slide cut up top. That's yeah, pretty that's sweet. That yeah, is so definitely that, interesting. That, that's our tier uh, tier one 2.0. So that is, that's got the new new knurling design that we came out with. I think this year or maybe yeah. last year it might have been. Yeah, and then we got the this is the tier. This is just a standard tier one. And then we have oh well, and that's another one in 17. <laughs> there we go. It definitely looks really good. Thanks, Garrett, for taking the hey, time, man. Absolutely, man. What's going on, guys? We just ended SHOT Show day number two, and uh, we had some pretty good coverage today. Ran into Tim from the Military Arms Channel. What up, Tim? And guys, like at the beginning of this video what I was saying, if you saw something that you liked, let us know down in the comments. If there's something that I missed, definitely hit that up. Let me know down in the comments. And if there's something you want to see, let me know. Ryan is going to go work his butt off all night now and try to get this video edited for you guys because when you start watching this tomorrow it'll be Thursday and you'll be seeing our day two coverage so go ahead drop Ryan a like comment subscribe if you haven't already we look forward to it guys and I look forward to seeing what you want to see for SHOT Show day number three